We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hello, my global viewers. How are you guys doing today? We are going to have a great show today. I'm super excited for our guest. Antoine Tanner is here. Woohoo! We're so excited to talk to him. He's working on many things, and we're going to dive into his life. Uh, again, I have this platform because I wrote a book and I am an advocate for children in the entertainment industry. I'm a voice for them and also I'm all about teaching the parents uh, the different laws and everything that's out there so that they can be more aware of how the industry works so that they can have a great time and allow their kids to have fun in the entertainment industry. Also, I have this platform because I wanted to be able to talk to actors like Antoine that we know of we've seen we know him we love all the work that he's done he's a wonderful actor but we don't always see him on you know Ellen DeGeneres or all these other big platforms and talk shows and sometimes that's intentional we'll find out if it is also we have other people and that's part of the business whether it's the music industry whether like I said social media entertainers that are entertaining people and I want to be able to talk to them and and see where their drive is coming from and give them a voice. Also today, I know I think I said also like three times. I'm going to change that word. <laughs> but today I'm going to ask all my viewers to tag their favorite social media entertainer. So we have YouTube entertainers, snappers who I think they're called snappers that may snap and entertain through Snapchat. And we also have IG entertainers who I watch a lot of them. I'm always entertained by especially a lot of comedians who go on to their social media and entertain us and make us laugh. I want you guys to tag your favorite social media entertainer so I can invite them to the show. I can interview them over the phone and I can also have them come into the station. So go onto my page, Jackie Elam, Jackie.elam on IG and go under my show banner and tag your favorite social media entertainer. And I can also include you guys on the show as well. So whoever I choose, I will then find that tagger and I can have you call in. You can send in a picture and you can be part of the interview, part of the show and we'll be able to see you and you can ask your social media entertainer anything you want I'm sure you could DM them, but I don't know if they may always reply. So this is a way to be part of a show that they're on. So hope that, you know, make everybody happy because I want to be able to talk to my social media entertainers myself. And I know we all are entertained nowadays through the Internet and through uh, social media. It's not just through TV, through apps now. Not everyone is watching TV and I'm just excited. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We have Antoine Tanner here. Hello, hello. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> so, of course, I know you like when I watched. I know Coach Carter and uh, Never Die Alone and Black Jesus is mad funny. Like uh, so <laughs> funny. I find that show. I wish that it would come to network TV. I know it's a little raunchy for that and a little ratchet at times and a little provocative at times. But if that if they toned it down, I think it would be so funny on network TV. It is. It's just it's risky because like it's one of the projects that I actually when I read the script, I was like. Oh damn! Um, what am I doing? But uh, when I I read it, I was like, oh, it's actually really good. It's funny, you know what I'm saying? It's it's hilarious, and and we wilding out. <laughs> but um, I like to choose projects like that, you know, because you have to pick and choose when you're doing stuff in your career. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I've been in the business so long now. It's like a lot of actors we know when you book a show, whether you just coming in to get a check for that one episode, or whether you come in to get a check for a few seasons, you know what I'm saying? And Black Jesus was one of those that I looked at and was like, dang, you know what? I think this show could be around for a while. You know, Aaron Magruder's a really good producer and Mike and, you know what I'm saying, with Slink and everybody over there and with Corey Holcomb and Pops and, you know what I'm saying? It's yes. like that whole, once they put everybody together, 
I was like, dang, I get to I get to do a show with Charlie Murphy and all of these people. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on. You know what I'm and saying? And all but, the characters are so funny. I love it. And you can't be a super Christian. Like, if we have comedy and comedians, where did that come from? That gift and that talent it comes from God. And we have to appreciate all that we have within. And I, I love it. Like, when I watched it, I wasn't offended. I find it to be extremely funny. Yeah, but I think what it is is, is basically like – um. You know, if people really read their Bible and stuff like that, you know, what what they basically doing is 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 a satire. You know, where they you have those people that's in church right now that was at the club last night kicking right. in and then it, it'd be like praise God. As soon as you walk away, be like I can't stand that heifer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like you, they basically talk about those type of people that you see every day and they they make the fun out of it you know what i'm saying yes and so is it on adult swim because it is so like ugh, yeah well i don't know with aaron he has you know he created the boondocks and all of that so i think that's their niche you know what i'm saying over there you know and all those guys are really clever at what they do to find the funny in the religion and stuff like that oh i love that i love that and for again people who may not have seen the show it's on adult swim it's called black jesus i love it i love the idea of just putting jesus in the hood and how would that be if jesus lived in the hood you know and people like that ain't that ain't jesus that's such and such you know <laughs> yeah but jesus did live in the hood <laughs> you know i mean he was Bible. born in the manga right like you know amongst the animals and all that other stuff yeah. and it's kind of dirty and all that other stuff. oh but i love the show though um you said earlier you pick your shows based on just just quality roles then right like you're trying to choose which ones would what represent your yourself or your just your your acting talent? Well, I think what it is is in this business, it's more of a, it's more of a, how do you say? It's more of a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like most of the characters that I played early on when I was acting was really like myself. You know what I'm saying? I really had okay. to. I, it really wasn't a reach for me. It was like character skills on One Tree Hill. That's that's me. You know what I'm saying? Drano and, and Sunset Park. That's me. That's who I was, you know what I'm saying? So once I start, you know, you try to find different roles where you could play and you like, you know, that's the challenge. That's the, the, you know, the satisfaction that you get out of trying to be somebody else. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and, you know, that's what we do for a living. You know what I'm saying? We want, this is a challenge for us to want to do this, to want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Just to, to, to give yourself that barrier that you could cross and then say, okay, I've done that. Now let me see if I could do this. You know what I'm saying? But you were an athlete. Did you always want to act or I lucked up? How? Right. So tell me this. I, I, I read on it. I'm like, wait a minute. He was an all American basketball player uh-huh. in high school. Right. Yep. And you started in the industry around 1999. Uh, No, actually, 94. 94. Yeah. I was playing basketball at um at the Drew League and uh, this coach saw me play and I was like real arrogant. You know what I'm saying? When I played, you know, but it was fun. I was like more entertaining. And the coach just liked the way I shoot. You know, everybody called me Drano. That was my nickname. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, like, after the game, you know, he was just like, hey, I think you should come, you know, try out for this movie. I didn't have an agent or nothing, but one of my good friends, he was an actor. You okay. know what I'm saying? I was just writing, doing music with him, you know, just in our spare time. But I was in college playing basketball. So it was exactly. like, I want to go to the NBA. I didn't. I don't want to act. I ain't, I ain't never took no classes. I thought you had to do all of that. And this guy, this coach, told me to just come to this tryout. So I go to the tryout. They was actors. They couldn't really play no basketball. So it was just, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then he was like, they love you. They want you to come back tomorrow, but could you read this this stuff? And I was like, oh, no. Mm-mm. I ain't no actor, bro. Y'all told me I was going to get $100 a day for being extra <laughs> on one of the teams. <laughs> now you, now that my $100 a day about to go out the window. <laughs> so, you know, I called my granny, rest in peace. And my granny was like, you know what? If you don't feel like you're going to get it anyway, you ain't got nothing to lose. So just go in and read it. And I was like, okay, but I ain't never acted. So this girl that I knew, her name is Becky Drury. She played basketball at Duarte High School. She's a good friend of mine. So I called her and was like, hey, Becky, I need your help. I need you to help me study these lines for tomorrow. I got this audition for this movie. And she was doing plays. And she was like, I got you, bro. It's nothing. So she came over and helped me study all that stuff. I had it word for word. And I didn't know. You know, because I've never been to an audition in my life. I didn't know that you could use the paper in the audition. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you thought you had to have that yeah, thing memorized. Yeah, I'm just thinking you got to know it. Well, like, how many pages? Was it a lot of lines to remember? Yeah, it was probably about four pages. Oh, okay. That's but it was a just nice a conver- amount. Yeah, it was just a conversation, but I had it like word for word. I thought you had to have the and and the but and the oh, four. I thought you, you, know, you had you to have everything. <laughs> but then I got in the room 
to audition and I seen Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman and I got starstruck and I was like, hey, my granny love you on Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just got starstruck and then she was like, OK, cool, that's fine. And I wasn't focused no more because I was so starstruck. Like I wanted to take a picture with them. Right. <laughs> yeah, I watched them growing up and then she was like, OK, I'm going to read with you. And then when she read, I f- totally forgot all the words that I was supposed to do. So I just said them in my own words. And then okay. when I left, I was like, well, I ain't get that. You know what I'm saying? I oh. studied all night, man. I, I thought, I, man, I just went in there and bombed. Oh, well, hopefully they'll still give me the $100 a day to play basketball. That's all you were looking for. I need so, 100 And how old were you at that? I was 18. Okay, okay. And then, um, yeah, because $100 a day for an 18-year-old is, that was, is that's was, some money. You know, I, was, <laughs> I was good. And then uh, I got to the house, and then my dad was like, some lady keep calling the phone talking about you need to call her. And I was like, for what? You know what I'm saying? He was like, something about some movie or something. I was like, oh, yeah, they probably calling to tell me that I bombed and don't come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I forgot everything I studied last night with Becky. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, so I ended up calling the lady back. And she was like, congratulations. You booked the lead. And I was like, wow. what does that mean? Like, I had no idea because I'd never been in the business. So I was but like. But the fact that, wait a minute, that's, that's not how it normally works. It doesn't work where you get the phone call before you get home. They, You didn't even get home yet. And well, because you, I called, I, well, I didn't have a car. So oh, I called okay. four buses. So oh. It took me like four hours to get home. <laughs> The, the audition was in Brentwood. I lived in El Money. <laughs> it was like I had to get I'm back. like, wait a minute. That's a fast booking. But normally it's a callback. So you didn't have to do a callback. You went in the very first time you read, you booked it. No, I, I had to audition for the basketball stuff. Oh, yeah, day. that's right. And, and then, then they had me come back to read. Okay, but you I didn't have back, lines for the basketball. It was just strictly no, the basketball. No, I just played basketball. Oh, yeah. but technically that was your first audition. Because I first feel like everything. you did the lines on that one day and booked it. Wow. Yeah, I, I was, I, I, like I said, I, I was fortunate. But then, you know, after that, I had this agent, Bonnie Lakey. Love her to death. She, like, you know, gave me a shot in the business. And I just started, she started sending me out. And I started booking stuff. And I, But most of the characters, like I said, was me. That okay. it, They wasn't too far reach but then once i started getting paid to do this stuff i was like you know what i can't disrespect the game i really need to sit down and learn how to do this because i was you know i was feeling inferior going in for certain characters and i hear some somebody in the room and they read that i was like damn he was able to transform himself like how did he oh, do okay. that so took a lot of me to start studying to to get my game right and so you started taking acting classes or you no, no? i just started studying you know what i'm saying like studying people i play basketball oh, okay. my whole life so the thing is the way I look at it is if you are on a team, you're around 12 different characters okay. every year that you play basketball. So a lot of times when you get an audition, you know somebody like that. Mm. So when you know somebody like that, you just go study them. Like it's just like if you tell a story and you intimidate your girl like and she was up there and uh, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like I would just take what my man would do and just use these words. OK, so I would imitate him somebody so because art you know art imitates, imitates reality yes. so it's like i would that's what i would start doing and i when i really knew that i was good or, or felt like i was crossing the barrier when i did um 413 hope street and i played a muslim character okay, on 413 hope street show. okay damon wayans produced the show actually okay eric lanville was the um director and stuff like that but it was a really good it was a, a drama Okay. With Richard Roundtree and Sherry Headley, like it was a big show. It was on Fox, but right before James, um, um, before Damon did uh, My Wife and Kids. Okay. But he pr- he produced that show. Oh, I didn't really know. Really good. That. A lot of people don't know that about no. Damon. Like Damon is, Damon is very talented. Well, yeah, <laughs> all of the Wayans are. Yeah, he's very talented, and I played a Muslim on that show, and I killed this this guy's son, Richard Roundtree's son, and then they dedicated this, they dedicated this center to the son. Okay. And when I got out of jail, I never got caught for the murder. Okay. I got caught for drugs. But when I got out of jail, I was sent to this center, which it was abandoned when I killed him in front of the, the center. Oh. And then I end up meeting the dad. The dad, they never found the killer. And I end up telling the dad that I, you know, once I found out everything that I killed his son and I went to dinner with him and his wife and told him that I killed their son. And But wow. me and the dad got really close. It was a really good show. Wow. And But the, it bought something different out of me. Okay. To where I was studying the Muslims, I so was that going elevated down your, yeah, so it even made your me. desire to want to like really dive deeper into your different characters. Yeah, you had to. I mean, because the thing is, I, I would listen. I started working with big actors, okay. and when you work with them, it was like intimidating. Okay. 
but I play basketball, so you're not supposed to never be intimidated about your opponent. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I'm going to do me, you do you. So I had to get my swag back. And in order to get my swag back, I had to be prepared. You know okay. what I'm saying? And they just basically taught me certain stuff. Like Charles Dutton said, slow it down, make it you. Okay. Denzel said, you know, real actors don't act, they be. Richard okay. Roundtree told me, go with your instincts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sam Jackson said, forget the line, know the scene. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So I took all of those pieces that they gave me. And just put it in one little thing, and that's what I live by. You and know you what I'm saying? you just picked that up pretty fast. You have to. Because when you're in the arena with Sam Jackson and he comes on set, you're not prepared. He is. Mm-hmm. You feel you feel mm-hmm. inferior. So it's like, nah, I'm going to be prepared too. You know what I'm saying? So then now it's... They all challenged you. All challenged So you me. worked with Denzel, Samuel Jackson. I didn't never work with Denzel yet, but I was close. Oh, but you... Oh, but you... But are, I took information from oh. him. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you want to work with him one day? Oh, of course. Yeah, definitely. I got close on a couple of his projects. I I thought I booked it, but I was close. <laughs> Who else would you want to work with that you haven't? Um, I haven't worked with Charles Dutton, but I was close on a project with his where I got offered, but then some something else happened. This was years ago. But, you know, I learned a lot from from those those guys. I would like to do something opposite Denzel though. Mm-hmm. I think that would be good. I think so too. That would be great. Like Sam, you worked with Sam. Um, my my, it's a family member in my boy's uh, family. I don't have to say his name, but he stunt doubles for Samuel Jackson and has been his sole double for like the last twenty years. Oh dang! You probably if you worked with him, probably you probably him, met yeah. him. Yeah, you met mm-hmm. him. But that's great. So you choose your characters very carefully, obviously. And so technically, it's like you're born with the gift in. Like you thought it was basketball, but it really wasn't. Basketball allowed you to recognize different characters, like you say, to then help you in the acting career that God had set for you. Yeah, I, I compare everything to basketball. You know, like be, you know, it, when you play basketball, practice starts at three o'clock. At 2.55, you late. Oh, okay. You need to be at practice at 2.30, be warmed up, be ready to go mm-hmm. at 3 o'clock. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's, you know, your desire, like, make sure you're prepared to compete. That's true. And you have to be prepared to compete. Same thing with the acting business. You know, be on time for this. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, be unselfish in the game. You know, share information with other people if you can. That's I feel like it's so much competition. People really do feel like if I share, if I give you this nugget or if I tell you the inside secret to it that I'm going to lose a job. Mm. I'm I can't share. I feel like it's a lot of selfishness sometimes in this business and they I feel like people need to change the way that they look at it because whatever is yours, it's, it's already yours. yours. Yeah, it's it's already, already yours. yours. Nobody can take it if, from if you. If God got your name on it, it's yours. It's already yours. Exactly. I tell people that all the time. I say, hey, man, look, when I go to an audition, I might give Academy Award performance, but mm-hmm. I, might be too sh- I might be too short. I might be too tall. I might be too light skinned, too dark skinned for the character, you know, because it's somebody else's vision. Whoever wrote it, they have in, the, in their mind what they want this character to look like. So they're okay. going to try to get closest to whoever they can get to look like that and can play the part. I may be better at playing the part, but I may not look like that. Right. So, again, if it is yours, it is yours. Nobody can take it from you. And that's why we need to open up all dialogue. And, and, and to be honest, even in the kid industry, you'll see the mama in the corner with the kid that's not letting the kid play with the other kids. I'm like, come on. Yeah. See, they're kids. Let the kid play. Like, we're all good. Like, every all the kids are cute. It's not about who's cute. It's not about if your hair is curly or not. It, you just never know what the writer or the director or the producer is looking for so many reasons why they book people Mm. and again your very first show was booked on a horrible audition in your mind so you thought and you still booked it they said he was really natural and i was like cool (laughs) (laughs) well we're gonna take a quick commercial break we are here with antoine tanner diving into his life and his career so be sure to stay tuned call in 323-473-3100 to ask him questions and i know he has a lot of followers and i see all the ladies on your social media i mean you're like they are loving you they love 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 and then he had the suit on with the banner and they were like oh you look good so (laughs) call in y'all man y'all man is on my show hello (laughs) We'll be right back. <laughs> you know there are many choices in radio, staff, and 
host, LA Talk Live. Thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. This is Stephen Van Heflin, director of Dat Stone High Tech Learning Academy, inviting you to join us every Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, for the We Are Code VR Tech Show. The We Are Code VR Tech Show is dedicated to growing a community of VR, virtual reality, and AR, augmented reality, developers in urban communities, creating social solutions using virtual reality and educational engagement in mobile apps, website design, VR development, drone building, and programming, robotics, 3D gaming. And we invite you to change the tech industry so there is more racial and gender diversity and inclusion. We also believe the We Are Code VR Tech Show on LA Talk Live can create creators and not just consumers of technology. So don't forget to tune in to the We Are Code VR Tech Show every Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, RNB, and now on Facebook Live. Watch and listen directly at LA Talk talklive.com reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasures this is la talk live and we are more than just talk welcome back global viewers we are so excited to have antoine tana here and he's just a natural he was born to do this it, it, it kind of fell into his lap a little bit from basketball. And we have a caller online right now. Welcome, caller. Who am I talking to and where are you calling from? Hello, hello. Hi, this is Jeff Daly. Hi, Jeff Daly. How are you? I am outstanding. I'm a first-time caller. Thank you for doing your show. Oh, thank you for listening and watching. Oh, no problem. And Antoine, I'm going to start out by saying I'm super impressed. I've never seen you do an interview, just know your work, and uh, I love hearing all the that goes into the successes that you have. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate the love. Oh, no problem, no problem. Now, I will say, I did not book my first audition like you did, so <laughs> I'm coming, I'm Most kinda probably coming from behind, but I would like to hear some imp- inspiration for maybe some struggles you've had along the way. I know that every day uh, you can't uh, you can't have the big one every day and yeah. how maybe you got through that. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was a, a big role that I wanted, you know what I'm saying? I got close on a bunch of stuff. It was like, man, I really wanted that one. I really wanted that one, but you don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is in this business, you're going to get told, you know, 300 no's before you hear a yes. So the thing is you just can't exactly. let it affect you. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure you focus your, your drive on something else the way you can pay your bills and, you know, that way you go into auditions, not stress. Like, you know, I don't want to go into this audition and my light bill is due. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because then you're not able to relax and do what you do. You know what okay. I'm saying? So just make sure you're able to take care of yourself first. Once you're able to take care of yourself, just always remember when you walk in that room, own the room, and have fun. You know, because it is fun. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. And my friend, uh, Westy Jonathan, said his dad used to always say, once you find something you love to do, you'll never work another day in your life. And that's true. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So anytime I go into auditions, I'm having fun. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, if they like me, they like me. If they don't, they don't. And usually when they, when you come out of that audition with that type of attitude, you would normally book it. <laughs> because That's it's just, amazing. It's funny, but you would normally book it when you go in there and you're not stressed because everybody else is going in there like, I got to get this role. I got to get this role. But when you go in there like, ah, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I'm so do you kind of go in like that? Or are you kind of like reading over the lines? You Are you pacing like some of them? Are you like in your zone? Because I see them, they're in the zone, they're in the corner. They're doing breathing exercises. <laughs> I don't do none of that. I just, you know, I look at it the night before. Okay. I put it down. Once I put it down, you know, a lot of people would, would trip you out with one thing. This is a lot of people's problem. They say they don't under, you know, they don't understand how to memorize. Okay. If you read something once and you put it down, you might tell me, you know what? I don't know it. I said, no, nah, you do know it. Okay. And then I say, okay, what was, what was, what did, what was it about? Mm-hmm. You will almost word for word verbatim tell me what that whole scene was about. So okay. what do you mean you don't know it? You know it. You might not know the word for word at that time. Right. But you know what the scene is about. Now you go back and you touch it. You see what I'm saying? So you go back and you tighten it up. Now you go back and tighten it up and you just put those words. Basically, you make it you. 
You see what I'm saying? So now you can are go you into that visualizing other. it though? As you so you, when you read it over the first time, I'm you kind of visualizing what's happening in the scene, the other characters involved. Yeah, and that helps you remember more. Yeah, you just you just go over it one time. And you actually know it. It's the weirdest thing. It's ever. not that easy. You're making it as I think it's just your gift. It just has no, to be your gift and okay. your talent. If you read a book, but you didn't pay attention to every page, or every chapter, I could ask you questions about a book and you could go back through that book and say, oh, yeah, well, see, the book was basically it. you could give me an overview. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. A summary. So of you, it. Could give, you give you an overview. So okay. you basically know what it's about. Now you just go back and you just tighten it up. That's it. You know it already. You know what I'm saying? But that will help you relax to where when you walk into auditions. You, well, you know I'm gonna take that tip. I'm gonna do because you're not know, just starting myself. I audition for commercials here and there. That's about it. But you know, I don't know. I kind of put up not a lot of stress because I don't do that with my children. So it's so funny because I try to take the tips that I give them for myself. But I'm like, it's so different. But yeah, commercials just, is different though. Anyway, from TV and film, okay. it's night and day. Have you done any commercials? Yeah, I did one in. Um, I think it was 97, the Da 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 commercial, the Volkswagen commercial, where okay. we, we smelled a little stinky chair and we put <laughs> it out to show how big the car was. That was it. That's amazing. And so you've been going now since 94, 18 was the age. And I looked at IMDb, your resume is pretty impressive. Like, so 94, this is, that's 20 years. Like, we're over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I only saw one or two years where I didn't see a, a gig on there. Like, you have worked every year of your career that's Except unusual that year because i went back to school to get my degree okay good. so that's why i took off because I, I it was hard to focus and work at the same time on school so i just took off and i was playing basketball so you know when you're playing basketball in college it's, it's you know your schedule is hard you just like yeah you can't play you can't play basketball go to class study and then try to make be on the set you know what i'm saying it's too much we have a caller Oh, yes. Is Jeff still on? Oh, that was a long answer. I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'm so sorry. You just breathed. Well, we can't even hear you breathing. <laughs> I, was just, I didn't uh, even know. He's just, up, hey, he's just part just of the show now. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jeff, for calling in. You got a long extended answer, but <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. Keep watching. Thank you, sir. I will. I mean, I forgot about him, actually. <laughs> he was just listening. <laughs> I was trying to make sure he was good. <laughs> well, I think he has the answer for sure. Okay, so, yeah, so you've pretty much worked. I think that that's unusual because, you know, sometimes it's many years. It, And I don't, that's why I wanted to ask, like, so it's really the art that you have now appreciated mm -hmm. and have taken in. And I think if you're coming from that place, maybe that's why you're booking. What do you feel like you're doing different from other actors out there, especially actors that we know of, but we don't always see? Well, what it is, everything you read is tomato, tomato. What you have to look at it is what's going to make you different in that room. Okay. When I auditioned for Never Die Alone. That scene that I had with DMX, everybody was in the room yelling, you know, like, hey, homie, do this is it. So me, I was always told the quiet ones are the more crazier ones. Oh, yeah. I've heard so that. I'm not going to do what they do. I'm going to go in this room and I'm going to approach this scene different. Okay. I'm going to be more eyes on real quiet. Like, listen to me. You know what I'm saying? And demand that attention to where now I'm scarier than the dude who's yelling. Right. Because you don't know what to expect from me. Okay. So I did it the opposite. I looked at it, you know, tomato, tomato. And when I left, DMX was like, him. He did that. So you stood out from that. But when you audition, you you don't see other people's auditions. But sometimes you could hear them in the room if you're in the hallway. That's true. So it's I like, do tell my boys, pay attention, listen. Yeah, you can hear them in the hallway. <laughs> you know, but I usually don't let that let that bother me. I, I'm a you make your choice and you stick with it mm -hmm. period you know because if the director wants something else then they'll ask you okay can you do it this way okay and then if you do it that way then that shows that you have range okay you see what i'm saying so it works both ways and so you have to also be able to be flexible in this business and don't take it personal you didn't do anything wrong you, they may want to see it a different the, way exactly. we have a caller on the line hello caller welcome to jackie elam live what's your name and where are you calling from Hi, my name is Kia. I'm actually from Houston. You're on the phone with your H-Town, H-Town. 
Woo-hoo. Hi, I just had a quick question because I know you back from like Moesha and you know Coach Carter, and I heard you mention that you actually was playing basketball. So, how was it working with Samuel L. Jackson? Because you know he's a character. Man, Sam is that's Uncle Sammy. You know, what I mean? <laughs> he's like w- working with Sam is it was so cool. I'm gonna tell you, it's a lot of superstars out here that act like superstars. Okay. Sam mm-hmm. don't act like that. Oh. And I'll tell you one quick story what happened on the set. And I never forget this. Never forget this. We were about to go to lunch one day. And we was working with these extras every day because, you know, we filming basketball scenes. So it's like four hundred extras on the on the on you know, on the show. Mm-hmm. And at lunch it was kinda of, they had it like segregated. They had this police caution tape up, like you know what I'm saying? Like this is where the extras sit, this is where the actors and producers sit, you oh. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And Sam walked in and he was like, what the hell? Did somebody get killed? Like, that's what he said. He said, somebody get killed? <laughs> Sam went and took that caution tape down. Oh. And was like, if we work together, we eat together. What? I nah, know that. Why they ain't got no ice over oh, there for the extras? Dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was hot. Like, why they don't have no ice for the extras? Okay. That's so admirable for somebody of his status. Exactly. To do that. You know what I'm saying? And he he knew everybody by name. Oh, Every day I that love we work that. with these people, like Sam is a genuine character, man. I love that dude. And then I read that. Thank you so much, Kia from Houston for calling in. Did you have another question? Oh no problem. Thank you. I just had that quick question. You guys have a good one. You Thank too. You, Mama. Thank you so much for calling in. Um I know we're gonna get more callers than usual because you're on. <laughs> <laughs> but um you were saying that uh, I, I read that he is the reason why you got into acting. Sam is. Yeah, well, you know, because I was a fan of his from years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, if I model my career after anybody, because I just love that Gator character that he did. <laughs> <laughs> that character was, I was like, oh, my God, that he, he was so funny to me. He had the little dancing thing yeah. and everything. And he actually told us the story on how he, he did that. He said he was fresh out the rehab. He was late for work. And the security wouldn't let him on the set. Spike was looking for him. Okay. And the security was like, hey, man, homeless dude, get away from the set, homie. And so he was like, he was trying to get on the set for like hours. And he was like, man, look, see, this is what happens when you give an addict a chance. They don't show up on time. But he had been literally trying to get on set for an hour. But oh. he was fresh out the rehab. So, <laughs> so he, looked, he oh. really looked like that, like Gator. He was really Gator. You right. know? But when Spike... He went to the gate and saw him was like, hey, man, get over here. And the, so the security was like, oh, I was trying to keep him away from the set. I ain't know. I thought he was like soliciting. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> so, you know, so it was crazy. But I was like, wow. But, you know, he told us that story. I was like, that's crazy. But, yeah, he definitely motivates me a lot because I see all the different characters that he play. He dives into them. And like I said, when you on set, I I just steal from them all the time. I just sit back and I just be in awe. But I still have to do my thing, you know, without them knowing. But I observe a lot, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And just observing how he took his beats and made this character likable mm-hmm. and, you know, and shaded it. And you just like, wow, like, damn, I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think one day I'm going to be able to get to that point. Wow, that's great. So it's definitely you that's booking the jobs. Is having good representation part of it? Like, like actually being able to get in front of these uh, auditions and or do you get a lot of your shows now from direct book booking now well I've been working a lot now so it's like a lot of people they know me you know what I'm saying it's it's a catch-22 because sometimes like it was a time when I wasn't working at all and people but, was not just, according to your IMDB yeah but I'm saying I was me being out of work for four months is a long time for, for me that is a that is un, you know you guys don't understand this is unusual that's unusual yeah that, that's a long it time it takes sometimes you know you'll see somebody some years go by you see somebody but you have consistently worked 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 it's a blessing and, and the thing is a lot of casting directors that know you they'll be like oh, he's not available they get tired of calling and just hearing he's not available he's not available oh. till one time like even for black jesus they thought I wasn't available and talk let knew somebody who called in and was like, Would y'all see Antoine Tanner? She was like, We was looking for him. He's available. Oh. <laughs> she was like, Yeah, we was gonna offer it to him. We weren't even gonna have auditions. I was like, oh, oh, cool. I was like, Thank you. Did you have to audition for Black Jesus or no? Yeah, I went in an audition. But Amber's Amber Bickham, she's really cool. She was actually a fan of mine. That's what's crazy. She sent me a picture one day that I posted on my Instagram of she said, I was so in love with you back in the day when you did Sunset Park. <laughs> and it was at a charity game. Okay. And I took a picture with her. And she still had that picture. Oh. <laughs> and 
and she's a casting director now. <laughs> so. And see, that's a that's a good tip. You never know who you're taking pictures with, actors, you know, and musicians. You got to treat entertainers. everybody good. Exactly. You got to treat them good. Because you never know where your next job will come from and who will put in a good word for you. Everybody that start at the bottom, that's not where they want to stay. Exactly. So you never know what they want to do. Some people start at the bottom just to learn every job on the way up and could be your boss one day. Like on Black Jesus, one of the producers of the show, Megan, is my boss. Right. But she was an assistant on Coach Carter. Oh. You see, she was a she was one of the producers' assistant. So and that's if you when, treated her bad or something, and she would have been like, yeah, "I'm not hiring that. him." Yeah, I she'll remember. remember. It. It's a small community, mm -hmm. and your reputation is everything in the business. Yeah, I know PAs. That's directors now. You know what I'm saying? That was the my PA Mark. He was a, a um. He was a PA on Sunset Park, and he's directing a lot of movies, HBO, Showtime. Like he's doing a whole lot. But I used to watch certain actors treat them dudes bad, and oh. I'd be like, Nah, dude, don't trip. I'm gonna go get my own pancakes. You know what I'm <laughs> and he'd be like, Nah, oh, this is my job. Let me go get it. You go to hair and makeup. Okay. I ain't got no hair, and I wear no makeup, so I could go get my pancakes. <laughs> I just want my pancakes yeah, and my serve. I could get that pancakes real quick. Don't trip, Mark. I got it. But they remember that because you you find yourself a lot of the stuff that I worked on. Was people just call like, yeah, we, we uh, you booked, you book uh, this, and I'm like, I didn't audition for that. And my agent like, well, somebody, one of the producers knew you and he knew your work, so you just, you know, you lead them all. You going to Utah to film this? I'm like, really? Oh, I love that. Cool. Tell them thanks. You know what I'm saying? But they remember what you do on set. You and it's a small circle. All that. And so they talk. And so if you the the butthole on the show, they gonna tell they their friends know. too. Yeah, they'll know. Don't work with this person because he mm -hmm. was a butthole. Yeah, they'll know. And you have to appreciate it because we all start somewhere. Yeah. And you don't know where a person will end up. So you want to treat everybody like you want to be treated. Very, you very, very to. simple morals. Just yeah, very you simple. Have to. But a lot of people, I don't know if it's just uh, the fame or the attention that they never had before. They began to change maybe. Me, and you've been humbled obviously throughout your entire career the same consistent I mean I lucked up in the business so I'm just happy to be here you know what I'm saying and then my granny always told me you know you treat everybody the same exactly you know you ain't better than nobody you just got a better job that's right that's it you make a little bit more money than they do and you might be a little bit more known than they are but that don't make you better than them and you said no because we know you like when you start especially the so many movies and, and shows you've done especially one tree hill now i want to say like i said earlier i've never watched that show <laughs> forgive me i've never seen one tree hill and uh you were like the token black person on there and i don't know if it was maybe geared towards teenagers at the time i'm not yeah, sure it's teenage uh so i just never caught it but you have die hard fans from that show oth oth i'm surprised y'all don't have like little signs for oth <laughs> oth yeah they, they got it They're, we still doing conventions like the show's been off the air for like four, four years. years i read and, that since 2012 and convention we supposed to go to paris in a couple of weeks and they just had to postpone the convention till january but we have another one in chicago in november and these conventions they do a thousand fifteen hundred people show up to these conventions is this show being aired in other countries and is that yes, why it's really there big you go because i'm like i'm just I'm, I'm confused i need to know what's happening why are they still yeah. like following oh so it's we're still superstars being over there overseas oh. yeah we have a huge following overseas all in the uk london i mean you name it over there australia italy huge followings over there for one tree hill but i mean we have uh netflix to thank for that because the thing is we have nine seasons Okay. And so when people like even younger kids now, they go on Netflix and then they binge watch it. Okay. So we get new fans every day because like it's fans on there that be asking me questions. I'm like, wait, oh, wait, I don't remember this. You're 16. When we did this show, you were two. Like, there's no <laughs> way you could watch the show. You know what I'm saying? But they watch it. Okay. They watch the show that hard. But it, but you know what? It's a really good show. So the thing is, if you start watching it, I guarantee you'll binge watch it. I so guarantee. I need to go because I'm like, I hope you don't feel offended. But I mean, that was four years ago. And in America, you know, that's like a long time ago because they're not I mean, I they're not airing it maybe on, you know, certain stations. But it's on Netflix now. Mm -hmm. I will go binge watch it now. But I saw the other stuff and I definitely saw Black Jesus. That is my show. See, you watch the black stuff. 
No, <laughs> that is not true. Okay, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is when I, you know, like a all white show, you got the one token. You know, those I'll be like, oh, okay, you got the one little black person in there. Like I don't know. But Again, it was more. It was more blacks was on more, the show. It was more blacks on the show. It just so. You know. And then if it just ended four years ago, were you hired to play way younger? Yeah, Your I character? was on the on the show. I would think I was like 21 when we started filming, but we all was like playing like 16. Also, oh, like five years younger. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we all was 16, but then as the show went to like season four, then what they did was they jumped ahead. They went ahead five okay. years, so we were all grown. So okay. we were all adults to where now we could drink, we could go to the bar. So it made sense to have a, a cocktail. You know what I'm saying? Like. See, that's, that's, like that's the that. magic of TV. <laughs> you can grow up really fast on it. We're going to take a quick break. We're having great conversation. I have more and more questions. Please call in 323-473-3100 with any questions that you may have for Antoine. He's here. He's young looking. And I don't see a ring on his finger. <laughs> well, I'll be asking that question later, too. Okay. <laughs> Tune in. Good. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> You know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome. This is Greg inviting you to tune in Saturday, 6 p.m. to the Mystic Ballroom. All vinyl most of the time, and we'll cover psychedelic, soul, garage, and much, much more. Myself. And the Young Mogul will bring you this every Saturday at 6 p.m. exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Live 365 Radio, Flag TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TV Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or you can watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality, radio, handcrafted for yours and mine, listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Welcome back, my global viewers. Right before the break, I was saying maybe possibly he's single, but I just found out he's not. So hopefully I didn't get him in trouble because he don't have his ring on. Beyonce put a ring on it. He's supposed I, I, to put a I ring on mine. your finger too. I wear mine. <laughs> okay, so he is married, so you cannot call in for his number, guys. <laughs> don't get me stabbed. No, no, don't get him in trouble. And hello, wife, if you're watching. So right before we went to break, I, I had a question in my head. So what else do you want to do in the business that you haven't done? We know you're an actor. Do you want to produce, write? I'm already producing and writing. I produce Crew, the movie that we did that's on Netflix. Actually, it's called CRU. Okay. It. So we, we did that. Um, I wrote a um, pilot that I'm probably shoot like in April or May Okay. called Epidemic. It's about an HIV uh, clinic. Okay. Kind of like a Grey's Anatomy meets like Crash. Oh, that's different though. You know. And so it's in a HIV clinic. Oh, that'd be some drama and some, yeah, so, some real. Oh, that's good. That's different. That's I, good. I wrote a, a movie that I'm not done with. It's called Innocent Killers. Okay. So, I, you know, about the um, judicial system and the death penalty. So okay. working on some stuff, you know, raising some funds so I could start, you know, doing that. But I directed a movie um, called Crush and... Um, you know, I'm I'm getting on that other side a little bit to be able to produce stuff and bring, you know, get rid of some of these whack reality shows that we watching on TV. Like, So if you didn't watch the show last week, we had a president um, of Cinema in and she was explaining the reason why we see so much reality TV is because it's just cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper it's to shoot cheaper. it and people watch it. So, you know, it makes it it's cheap to shoot it. They make a ton of money. So, I mean, from a producer standpoint, why not? Mm -hmm. If people going to keep watching the Kardashians, they tune in. We're going to keep shooting the Kardashians. That's what I would do. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it ain't my cup of tea. But Yeah, and mine either. I stopped several seasons ago. Yeah, it's not my cup of tea, but to each his own. They like it. I love it. 
Right. And so, yeah, you've, you've been in it for so long to where it is. It's is that a natural transition? Do you think most actors, if they're in the game for a minute, they eventually another door is open or not? You think, do you think they're comfortable with just being an actor or do we all have that inside that want to grow and like go to a high level and challenge ourselves on a different level? Well, I think that as much as I work. You know what I'm saying? I was a series regular on the show for nine years, so you work every day. You know what I'm saying? So when you work every day, you start seeing, you start getting the creative juices flowing and you start seeing stuff. It's like, oh, okay, I know how to do this. I could do that. I could do that. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll direct the episode or maybe I'll try to write an episode. You mm -hmm. you, you fall into it and you kind of already know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, dang, you know, I've been doing it on this side of the camera. So it's like nobody got to tell me how to how to be blocked. Nobody got to tell me this. And then you have directors that have come up and ask you questions like, can you give me this? And then you always go back to the director like, I think that this character should do this. And I, I feel like I should move around. I feel like I should do, you know what I'm saying? So as you're doing that, you're actually directing. Directing, exactly. <laughs> you're actually directing. So why not get the extra check? And the, the check is like three times as much as what the actors get. Oh, okay. <laughs> so but they don't get like, residuals though. No, they do too. Directors get residuals? Mm -hmm. Producers? Yes. You oh, I always thought too. it was stunt performers and actors. Mm. I love learning. Mm. Okay. You get money. Oh, that's <laughs> great then. And that's wonderful. Yeah, that's they stay wonderful. with the check. And so do you have to have different representation when you're now, because, you know, you have the Writers Guild, you have the Screen Actors Guild yep. and After Guild. Mm -hmm. So you have to get, you have the same representation, but you also have to join that guild and you do all that. You join that guild. And then Director's Guild. Yep. Do, they don't, do they have a Producer's Guild? Yes. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Oh. Yep. You got to join them all. Oh, so, so that's like four different pensions. Four different, <laughs> four different set of dudes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so true. <laughs> so, but you you're always it. working. You have no problem. You're always working. Yeah, they working. take a little percentage of it, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. It's part of, the, part of the game. But they protect you, too. So, you know, that's good. So what are you doing outside of the industry that you would want your followers to know about you that they don't know? Well, right now, I start my... Um, I think this is my fourth season with the Orange County Nova Stars. I play professional basketball still. Oh. But our season starts November 4th. And, okay. um, and so right now I'm just training for that. I have my own company. I started a company called Greenhouse Therapies. And medical marijuana out here is, like, really big, and it makes a lot of money. And it's like it's I don't, I've never too. smoked in my life. But on the medical side, when you look at it, you're like, yeah, hey, this is a good investment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I invested in that, you know what I'm saying? So I got that going on. I run that business every day and, you know, about to branch out and go, you know, commercial and stuff like that to get to the next level because the business makes a lot of money and I could take that money and start funding projects that I want to shoot instead of meeting with investors who just want to meet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's L.A. Right. Everybody want to meet. Oh, you having meetings. Yeah. No. Everybody want to meet. I'm I don't want to meet. What's a business no meeting? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to meet. I'm tired of taking people to lunch. But just, <laughs> just to take them to lunch. It's a write off, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so with Kim Kardashian just getting robbed, you know, we've had, you know, I know Kanye has been robbed. We've heard about Drake. You know, uh, we've heard about Chris Brown. You have all these celebrities that. Uh, either somebody's stealing from them or trying to plot. Do you ever have any concerns? Um, do you think it's the crew that they have around them? Do you normally think it's an inside job? Do you have any concerns about someone robbing you as an actor? You you are the face of a lot of your shows that you're on. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's the I think it's the circles you keep. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I'm from Chicago. I'm a hood dude. Period. Well, so they probably don't want to mess with you <laughs> just to begin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, I think. When you move a certain way and you create so much attention, you give people a chance, an opportunity to pay attention to what you're doing. I don't post a lot on social media. I just got out the shower. I'm about to eat some <laughs> eggs. I'm about to go out, out of town for the next two weeks. Your house could get robbed doing that. That's snitching. You know, I grew up, said snitches get stitches. You, you, I'll post it when I get back. Right. This was my trip in Paris. You, nobody knew I was gone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's the circles that they keep. A lot of times when I go places, I might be in the hood and sloss a swap meet or something. And by the time I walk through to go get what I'm getting and I get out, somebody might recognize you. And you like, but it might be other people that recognize you and don't say nothing because they're like, nah, that ain't him. Okay. But by that time they realize it's you, you gone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, wait, that was, I think I saw a dude. You know what I'm saying? You, thumbs, you keep it pushing. So they don't have a chance to plot. 
because they don't, you know what I'm saying? It, it depends on how you move. I, you have to move different being born in Chicago. Okay. You have to be observant being born in Chicago. But Kanye is from Chicago and he got robbed. But you said you, it could have been the inside job. But Kanye was boasting. From, Kanye I'm gonna ask was you. from the hood, but he wasn't part of Kanye wasn't no get down like that. Oh, uh, okay. He wasn't no, I was out there. You okay. know what I'm saying? I was in the gangs. I was out there. You know what I'm saying? So you roll different when you, you move different than, you know, cats on the block. They weren't trying to get that kind. They like, oh, that's the that's the little dude. He going to school. He do. You know what I'm saying? They do. You live on the block, but they ain't really, you know, about you. You ain't on that. Yeah. But when you part of the hood, it's a little bit different. Do so, you think it's part of it? It's the boasting though. Like if if I, I just got this diamond earring, this this this, I'm always showing. They're they're always sometimes showing all of their money sometimes, and you know, there's a lot of people out here struggling, and maybe they just want to get part of it. It's a hating mentality. You know, I feel like everybody was offered the same tools. You know, you, you learn the same rules growing up in these houses, and, you know, I knew that the stove was hot and the refrigerator was cold. You know, you learn that at five or six. Don't right. touch that. Don't do not do this. It's just some people don't... Everybody feel like you owe them something okay. when you come from certain... You know, it's a mentality. A lot of people feel like, oh, because you doing what you do, and it's like, no... When you were skipping school and I was in the library studying for that test, I couldn't party. Right. But now that all my studying and everything done paid off for me and your life ain't turned out the way you want it to, that's because of those are the choices that you made. So because I I could enjoy the fruits of my labor, I should be able to do that without you having to say I owe you something because I came from the same neighborhood as you. We had the same opportunity. You just didn't take advantage of what you should have took advantage of, mm-hmm. period. That's true. You know. But with them, you know, like I do, they do boast a little bit about what they got. I'm not flashy. But like I said, I'm part of the But hood. are you concerned? Because I feel like the, again, it could be from the inside job. It could be the boasting. But, you know, with a gun to your head, you know, I feel like, okay, that didn't took it to a whole other level. We got the crazy guy that's always on red carpets kissing Will Smith in the mouth or, pick, you know, kissing uh Kim Kardashian's bud and picked up, you know, the little Gigi Hadid girl. Yeah. So, you know, I know if he came across you, you probably hit him with a hook or something. <laughs> but you, but I'm just saying a lot of those people, they get caught up in the limelight and they're not observing. You know what I'm saying? They're not observing. It's the way you observe certain situations. It's like if I go to my cousin Kiki house and I know he a gang member, nine times out of ten, I know what's going on over there. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So. What's the likelihood of it being a drive by? Very high. But if I'm at Tyler Perry or Oprah Winfrey house, what's the likelihood of a drive by happening over there? It's not. Unlikely, it's the company right. you keep, the way you the way you move. You know what I'm saying? You you surrounded by nine broke dudes, you gonna you bound to be the tenth. It's right. the company that you keep. You know what I'm saying? Like I just move different. That's okay. all, you know. I just think they boast and brag a little bit too much and cats just they get at them. But when you more humble Cats don't never know what you got. Exactly. So when they don't know what you got, a lot of times, it's, you know, freer. And I think it's a difference. It's a difference in the type of fans that you have. Okay. NBA players have a different type of fan. They have the girls who go, oh, my God, I love you because they see his contract on TV every week. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? When you're a rapper, you got people constantly reaching to the stage. They can never touch you. So, you know, what I'm saying? so they're in love with that image. With actors, they see us every day on TV, so they feel like we're more personable to talk to and approach because they feel like they know you. Exactly, that's you know true. what I'm saying. So my fans don't come off and go, "Oh my God, it's you!" Like like they would a Fifty Cent or a, a Drake, or you know what I'm saying. So I don't have I don't have that crazy rush. I have the more, "Hey dog, what's good, man? Hey, I, hey, I love your work, man. You doing your thing." So even the hardest of the hardest gangsters approach you like that. Keep doing your thing, my boy. I really. really just at the DMV, I was with my son yesterday, and the dude yelled out the window, hey, man, keep doing your thing, homie. <laughs> and I was like, I appreciate it, brother. I kept kept walking, but it's a different love that they have for actors okay. than they do for basketball players or, you know, whether you're an athlete or a rapper. And everybody you name that got robbed, they yeah. have that paparazzi type of fan. They do. They you, do. You can't name one actor that so just you, got robbed. You intentionally, <laughs> you're seen... But in the background, but known, but you're not like purposely like trying to just do yeah. the whole paparazzi in the limelight all the time. Like that's planned. Is that because you have a family? You think I mean, because no, you're married with kids, or that's just who you are? It just that's what it it comes with the territory. It's just that's what 
actors fans are because i mean a lot of people know sam jackson a lot of people know denzel but they see denzel at basketball games they're like hey, what's up denzel how you doing man I'm... it ain't that you know what i'm saying but you see a rapper it's like oh, he think he got it because he, he throw fifty thousand at the strip club and boom. you know what i'm saying so it's yeah. constant competition because that's your persona people believe your image yeah. when you are an athlete or you are this when they see you outside of that because all they know is money when you're a basketball player all they see is oh he worth 184 million he got two shoes out okay <laughs> you see what i'm saying but they don't never say that about actors they don't know what That's we true. make they just feel like you're more personable to approach that is true you don't know we yeah, never know no, what no. your contract is yeah your contract ain't on unless you will smith where they know you're making 30 million dollars a movie you know what i'm saying that's usually it all the rest of the actors you have no idea what they making that is so true. You don't. And that's and why you do white shows because you <laughs> make a million dollars a year. And, and you ain't never, never got to negotiate. So it's good to be the token black person on a white show. Yes, it's it really is. good. I need another Get job that like money. that right now. I know, right? We need a friends around here. Good show going on. Great money. Yeah. So, yeah, that's amazing. And that's good, though. I figured it was more of the, the personality of the actor that causes that attention because we will attract what we are and if you are yeah. boastful and if you are flashy and you want to be seen then you're going to be on the scene mm -hmm. so do you have you ever sat down on like a talk show type of uh, arena to like get interviewed do you ever do like the ellen degeneres type of shows or you you just stay away because i know one tree hill it was a hit so you I mean, we've been on MTV and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? But they don't they don't call you on their show. So <laughs> when they don't call you, you don't go. <laughs> Our whole thing is, you know, in this business, a lot of times, you know, the game done changed so much now. Yes. So the thing is, in this business, just keep working. And when you keep working and the fruits of that labor pay off, it's just going to pay off. You know, let them come to you. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep a job. That's really what it's about. It's really about doing what you want to do, having fun and doing what you want to do, getting paid to do what you love. And, you know, just experiencing these different characters that you could play. You know what I'm saying? Because with acting, it's not like basketball. It's not like rapping where, you'll, you know, you could fizzle out. If you're talented, you could act till you die. Yes, you know what I'm saying? You could play all kind of characters, you know, from from here to from childhood on. You know what I'm saying? So. It's just staying fresh and, and, and studying your craft and just making sure that you're out there to do what you're supposed to do. So do you take pride in having a separate life then? Like you do you do it intentional, though? Like, are you more prone to separate the two? Like your family life is, is here and then your career is over there? Yeah. I, yeah. Because, you know, none of my kids is actors or nothing like that. OK, that was going to be my next question. So you're married and how many kids do you have? Four. Oh, you have four kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. You look so young. I mean, I know you get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, my daughters are 23, 21, 23. and my sons are 20 and 15. Oh, okay. Wow. Black don't crack. <laughs> yes, yes. It's really true. I mean, you know, guys, we're friendlier with the son. But um, that's amazing. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so your, your wife, is she in the business? Nope. None of my kids. They, not. they don't have the desire because okay, you've done a great job. You have amazing fans that are still with you from day one and they don't they just don't have the desire at all to do it. They've never asked at all. My daughter asked one time and then uh, she didn't follow through. So she's so like, are they more athletic then? Did they take that from you? Yeah, my sons are af athletes. My okay. daughters are just they just cute girls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all they have to be. And yeah, daddy's little girls. girls. Yeah. <laughs> so they do what they do. That's wonderful. If they ever came to you, though, at a later age and say that they wanted to do it, like maybe your younger kids, would you uh, advise them to? Would you want them to? I mean, if, if that's what they want to do, I support it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they want to do, I support it. And because, you know, growing up, a lot of times that's what a lot of kids miss, that support. You know, like even if my son, it was a point in time where he wasn't getting hardly no minutes, but I didn't miss a game. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just you being there, that support. It's different for them because I didn't have it a lot of times, you know, growing up. Like my mom probably seen me play once, <laughs> and I was, right. like, but she got every trophy that I ever that I ever earned. You I know? love that. So family support and family is really big, obviously, for you. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta have that. That's wonderful. And how long have you been married? Uh, ten years. 
Okay, that's great. That's great, especially in this business. Well, eleven years actually. Don't let don't get me stabbed. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. So, um, you, is there another season of Black Jesus? Yes, we don't start filming until January though. Okay, because I was wondering. I'm like, please let this show come back. Oh uh, yeah, I think like that show is gonna be around. I think that they're rewriting a lot of stuff right now to make this season like one of those seasons because it's it's that season where. This is a pivotal season for us because if the show comes out and it's still number one like it's been, then they'll probably buy 60 more episodes. So we'll be on the air for another five years. You know what I'm saying? So I think they just making sure we got 10 hot scripts to go do and go and get this get the syndication money. So it's 10, <laughs> 10 shows per season yep. for your for Black Jesus. And you guys can catch that on Adult Swim. It is hilarious. It's my new favorite show. And I'm kind of mad because I watch TV through the apps. And the, the last season, they give me the first few and then the last few. But the ones in the middle, I'm like, oh, I can't yeah, get it on the app. You got go to go So I need to do it through Hulu. This was very quick. I need to stop saying that, but this this one hour does go by fast. Oh yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you so much for coming in. We thank learned you a lot. For me. Thank we you. learned thank a lot. You. And the obvious reason, honestly, for you working is just it's your gift, it's your talent. That's what your calling is. That's what you were put on this earth to do. And so thank you for contributing to the world of acting. Oh, uh, thank you we so much. We all love your the, work. Uh, thank Continue you, thank to be you. humble as you are, which I know you will be. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Jackie Elam. This is Jackie Elam Live. Oh, I didn't even introduce my name early. I guess they figured that out, huh? I, I, eventually, I, was, I knew I was going to stop saying I'm Jackie Elam. Like, duh, it's Jackie Elam Live. <laughs> so don't forget, everyone, tag your social media entertainer, and I will choose you and that social media entertainer to interview on my show. If there are any local social media entertainers, I will have them come in. I can also interview your social media entertainer over the phone, put pictures, even put some videos on of whatever comedy skit they're doing. I can add you onto the show, you the tagger as well, to talk to your favorite social media entertainer. So thank you so much for tuning in. We had Antoine Tanner here, very humbled actor, now producer, writer, and watch out for all his shows that he will be working on. And they already know your social media, but you want to shout out your social media? Follow me on Twitter at Antoine underscore Tanner or on uh, Instagram at Antoine Tanner 2214. Awesome. Got it? Awesome. We'll see you guys next week, Saturday from 12 to 1. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'm about to tune in now. She gives the voice to the voice now. I'm about to tune in now. If you entertain, she wants to know your name. Thank you for tuning in to LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. For original reality radio and crafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned.